plantation in Virginia is where the blessed Mrs. Tyler gave birth to John on March 29, 1790 on this great and glorious earth. Sickly John was tutored till at twelve he entered William and Mary in B.A. In 1807, when he graduated, spent two years learning law his father's way. He passed the bar and opened his own practice as a Richmond attorney at law. At 21, became a rep in the state legislature and liked what he saw. In 13, he wed Letitia, had eight children till in 42 she died. Two years later, he remarried, had seven children more, Julia his bride. Now he was elected the governor of Virginia in 1825. In 27, John became a U.S. Senator with his strong pro-states rights drive. In 36, a Senate vote challenged his belief, so John resigned and retired. But John became the next VP 31 days later, Harrison expired. Had himself sworn in as president, but some thought that was a little too bold. Then he made his Whig party mad who tried impeaching him and left him to the cold. For John's entire term, the Congress blocked him specifically Clay, whose power had amassed. Though he helped bring Texas and Florida to the Union, much of what he wanted wouldn't pass. He tried in 44 to run again for Prez, but couldn't get the vote, so went on his way. In 61, he tried for peace between the states, but realized the South should break away. John became a Confederate rep, but before the first session took place. On January 18, 1862, sadly a stroke stopped John's heart's pace. In Washington, his death was not memorialized, he was a traitor to the Union, they say. His coffin was a drape with an American flag. A somewhat outcast to this day John's legacy as the 10th president Was his passion for the rights of the states He was against any compromise Persistent never to deviate